and John Jones beefing afterwards, right? You know, I didn't. I read some articles about it. How did that all start? So, ooh, I don't even know how it started. All right, all I know is that I, I John these, Jones doesn't have a tweet. Have, he did be roommates in college. So I, I know that Covington has been accusing him of taking steroids and all types of stuff. Well, he also said something like, go cheat on your wife and do more coke. Or go cheat on yeah. your wife again and do more coke, which is like, I don't know, man. You don't break guy code. If a guy's cheating on his wife, yeah. you let that be out there. You let him figure that out with his wife. International well, yeah, Man's yeah, Day. Defend anyway, because, you know, he's your boy, isn't he? Who? Well, it's Colby. Colby? You know, you're, you're taking his side in all of this. No, I'm not. I actually, I, I don't like the fact that... I don't like the fact that Colby Covington said that about Jones. That's a little fucking weird. And I also feel like Colby Covington's, he's just trying to make his, a name for himself by being provocative and by being big and saying crazy shit. And it's not the well, way. Well, so, here's the, so here's the thing. You're right in what you say there. And this is what people are talking about now in this new modern era of MMA. And it's all about shit talk and no more discipline in this and that, which which I was thinking about this, and I kind of thought, well, am I guilty of that? Because obviously my last fight with GSP, there was a lot of shit talk. Um, so, but, 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 but I don't know. I don't know if it is, because do you understand what I'm saying here? I mean, I, I, I agreed with what a lot of people were saying about Covington and this new era of MMA, the Conor McGregor era, if you will, where you talk shit. And I, you know, as, as I just said, I'm repeating myself, I did that in the GSP fight. But I've kind of always been like that, and I've right. been like that the scene for a long time. So, I, but I was—I was doing some soul searching, thinking, "Well, have I contributed to that fact?" And I don't think so, because as I say, I've been like that ever since I've been on the scene. And and if if um, and and you know, if, unless I've got a, an issue, which I haven't with Kelvin Gastelum, then I'll play it fair, you know. Yeah, I think um, I think there is a new era, and I think that there is a uh, you know almost the idea is the microphones in front of you make a statement, do something, say something crazy, call it your next opponent, and I think that he's just I don't know he's almost like missing the do mark really a little bit. Do you think he's doing that and he's just taking it too far, or do you think the guy's possibly just an asshole and uh, needs a good hiding? I think because it's probably that, a combination I don't think of both. That he's playing up to it all and trying to be a Conor McGregor, I really don't. I think it's probably a combination of both. I think that, the, you know, if you got a problem with John Jones personally, right, and you don't like him, why else are you doing it except to do it yeah. on Twitter for attention? Well, no, exactly. Especially, yeah, okay, so hold on. Let me just backtrack there because, for one, I've never met Colby Covington, so I, I don't actually know. So I'm sitting here saying this like I have an opinion based on facts when I don't have any facts whatsoever. I only know what I've read on the Internet and seen on TV. So who knows? Maybe he is. Uh, quiet, shy, retiring type. I highly doubt it, but may maybe, you know, he is laying it on thick. As you just said there, that is a good point. If he's got a problem with John Jones and he used to share in a, uh, a bedroom with him at college, one would assume that he has his phone number or can get it pretty easily, but yet they're going back and forth on Twitter. So once again, uh, that does kind of lead to uh, the public dispute, trying to get Twitter followers, trying to get headlines, all that type of stuff. So, yeah, m maybe you're right because, come on, man, you shouldn't be having those kind of discussions on Twitter. It's ridiculous. This is, uh, I guess, an interview that he did. He said, we were cool the first couple of months we lived together. This is Covington. Um, but he was difficult, difficult as shit to live with. The guy was dirty. He stunk, didn't shower. The guy was just a mess. He was getting into partying and all that bad stuff back then. He was just going down the wrong path, but he always tried, tried to act like a saint. Oh, I'm not into religion. I'm all about. I'm into religion. I'm all about God. This and that. He's he's just fooling the fans. He needs to be exposed for the real person he is, because he ain't this saint and good person like he tries to act like he is. And I got to be honest with you, I've said that about Jones before. It's like I would like John Jones a lot more if he wasn't. It just seems kind of phony, right? So be the be you the. No, that's the problem with John Jones. Of course, it's phony. You know what I mean? Oh, glory to God and this and that and yada yada yada. And then he's acting the exact opposite. Uh, outside of the octagon, John Jones. People like watching John Jones for the, you know, the amazing performances that he's had inside of the octagon. The way he's beating people like nobody else has beaten them. How creative he's been. How he beats people at his own game. But then he gets on the microphone and acts like an absolute moron and comes across as very fake. I mean, of course, see Greg Jackson after I think he choked out Lyoto on machine. He's like, go over there, check on him, get some fans. Yeah. You know? And it just, I mean, and that was just the start of it, you know. Weird. So. But uh, we're going off on a tangent here and talking about John Jones. But Covington, I don't know. Maybe it is an act. And if it is, it's failing because, yes, you want to be controversial. But, but I, I, I mean, he's certainly being controversial, that's for sure. But I don't know. It seems like he's on a one-way ticket to being 
out of the UFC at some point soon because I think he had some kind of discipline at uh, disciplinary after the incident in Brazil. And then I think he was flown home. I mean, that is embarrassing. The UFC, he was there as a guest fighter. Well, and the UFC flew him home before the fights even happened. I mean, come on, man. I mean, that that's just embarrassing. Yeah. Well, he, um, I know that, that he embarrassing. got... embarrassing. Uh, Colby, you're getting on a plane and flying home. I'd say, hold on a minute. Who the fuck are you talking to? I'm a grown-ass man. If I want to stay here in Sydney, I'll stay here in Sydney. Of course, you'd have to pay for his own hotel. Um, you know, but it is. It's just embarrassing. It's like it's like you're at school, and then the headmaster says, um, "Bisping, you're going home." Do you? I'd say, "Fuck you!" No, I'm not. You know, so the whole thing is very, very embarrassing for Covington there. And if he's trying to get headlines, yeah, great, he got some headlines. But I just don't think the headlines that's going to do him any favors. And now, certainly, of course, I understand what you're saying about the police, Lewis, and I agree with you in modern society. But I just want to, once again, when your job is to fight for the baddest, baddest fight organization in four ounce gloves uh, in mixed martial arts that used to be no hold bars fighting, I don't think it's a good look when you go to the police and pressing charges because somebody threw a boomerang at you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess I agree with that, you know, sort of. But once again, it's a fucking weapon. I won't, I won't re rehash the point. But, um, yeah, I think that, look, I think Colby, Colby Covington, he, he's entertaining. I think you kind of need to do this a little bit. But I think that, you know, I, it just, when you look at, like, his entire, I'm looking at his Twitter timeline now, He it's just... What's, uh, yeah, it's just very, very provocative for the sake of being provocative. Like, you know, uh, Ariel Hawani tweeted, I guess, tomorrow he's going to have Colby Covington and, and a bunch of other people on. And he goes, and he goes you could have just cut it off with Chael Sonnen and yours truly. The orange bad guys are the only reason anyone's tuning in. And he's, he's just kind of going like, all right, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just let it go. We get it. Mm. What is it? Col Colby? Colby? Col Col there, there Colby Cove right, MMA. Got, got it. You could just cut it off with Chelsea on and yours truly. The Oregon bad guys are the only reason anyone's tuning in tomorrow. Nobody wants to hear Two Faced Tyron. Oh, that is true. Nobody wants to hear Two Faced Tyron Woodley. We'll get into him in a minute. He keeps talking shit about me, man. What is his problem? What do you, Did say you see now? his video this week? No. Uh, hold on. As I said, we'll get into it in a moment. We all know Nate Diaz has got better shit to do than fight Ty Quill. Yeah, Tyron Woodley, he is a very sleepy individual. When your excuse going to be when UFC sends me a contract with my name on it? Oh, you see, he's trying to fight Tyron. Yeah, anyway, I've talked to you enough about Colby Covington. Um, he seems like he's a bit of a dick, uh, but I don't know. Maybe he's a great guy. I don't know. I never met him. Um, yeah, there you go. Let me ask you this one last question before we get out of here. For your last fight... You know, you're talking about the weight cut and it being such a, you know, a, a thing that you think is stupid and not worth it. And would you consider doing 205 pounds for your last fight or even a 195 catch weight? Oh, absolutely, I would. I absolutely would. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I was 15 and 0 at one time as a light heavyweight, and the weight cut is a pain in the ass. And I, I, I do feel weaker at this weight. You know, I mean, as I said, making 185 isn't easy for me. Fortunately for this fight, it's not going to be an issue. I've, I've, I've been eating pretty good, and I'm still super light. I mean, I. Just before, I actually had a sandwich and fries. And I said to my father-in-law, I said, Jesus, I said, this is great. <laughs> Last time, I was living off lettuce and fresh air yeah. and spinach and tomatoes. And now I'm uh, I'm having a, uh, a turkey sandwich with cheese and avocado and bacon. And it tasted bloody amazing. And I'm still super light. You know, I guess, I, you know, I just dieted all the weight off. And I'm still training most days. So I'm not putting the weight on. So, uh, but, but yeah, to answer your question, yeah, absolutely I would. I mean, I'd want to have... Um, a telling fight against an opponent that matters, that matters to people. I don't want my last fight to be a washout. I want it to be a, a suitable opponent. And whether that's a 205, a 185, 195, I'd certainly be open to all of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're, we're speaking of people going back up. Um, your boy Rashad Evans just moved back up to 205 because he, he, he was having trouble, I guess, at 185. He didn't even get a win at 185, right? Yeah, he didn't get a win at all. Mm. I think, was it 3-0 and or 2-0? and I think it might have been 3-0, and which is... Which is a shame, and it goes back to what I say. You know, I mean, sometimes you, you, the lighter you get, obviously you're losing fat, but you're losing muscle.